Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com, and this video is about a feature on GEDmatch called Ancestor Projects. It is part of the free tier on GEDmatch, and I've got a companion article about the feature. I'm logged into GEDmatch here, I'm on the home page, and over here on the DNA applications, if you scroll down to the bottom, you've got this feature called the Ancestor Projects. And just to quickly say, well, what is an Ancestor Project? An ancestor project is a way of grouping together GEDmatch members who have a common research interest. And usually that's going to be an interest in a particular ancestral location. Sometimes it's dedicated surname projects. And then also there's a number of projects that are of interest for a particular ethnicity. I'm going to click into Ancestor Projects. Now, if you're going into Ancestor Projects and you're not a member of a project, look a little bit differently to what you're going to see when I click on this. Just we'll ignore this for now because I'm a member of project. I'm just going to scroll down here. What I'm showing here is the list of available projects and this is what you'll see if you've never joined a project. How many projects are there? Well there's over 400. One of the unfortunate aspects of the display is that there's no particular keyword filtering on, on this. There's no sorting. You're going to have to do two things. You can take a shortcut and use your browser to do a text search, or you can browse through the lot. So let's let me show you a shortcut on any browser. If you hold down the control key and click the F key, control F, your browser will pull up a search box, right? Now it is, it's an exact text search box, yeah? You're not gonna get variations. When I came into this first, I was looking for a particular county in Ireland, and I typed in Cavan. And straight away, it jumped down. To what it's, it's telling me there's five um, mentions of Cavan. It's jumping me down to the first. And there is a specific ancestor group that are other GEDmatch members who are interested in ancestral location of County Cavan. So that's three mentions there. So is there another group? Because now there may be several groups. Okay, so if I just um, click the down arrow, I'm at number four. Where's the fifth mention? Is there a different? Okay, so I click the down arrow and it's jumped me down to another group. And this is actually more specific. So you just gotta read the name and the description. This is the Lynch Brady family of Cavan Ireland. I do not have either of those surnames in my direct line. So I'm not going to join that group. And that gives you a feel for what you've got going on here. So we have here, there's a Manhattan, New York, genealogy group. Descriptions give you a bit more detail of focus of interest. And then just to go back to, let's say, ethnicities, here is the Lumbee Indians, and it's about recognized Native American tribe in a particular area. And what you've got here in terms of European ancestry, you've got the Lower Saxony, which will be German, etc. You may also be interested in a particular surname. So just from looking at page I have to be sitting on here, We've got the Lohan or the Lohan ancestry group, and it's heritage of all who have Lohan, Lohan, or Lohan ancestors, right? So it's a little bit of a pain. If you want to want to do direct searches, you're going to have to, you know, do a control F and put in whatever, 32, 64 different surnames. Again, with Lohan, and they've put in three variations here. You may have a slightly different variation. They haven't put, put in the description. So you're going to miss out. The other thing you'll miss out if you're just doing a control F search is some kind of interesting projects that you would never have, I would personally would never have thought of. So my recommendation is on a slow evening where you don't have anything better to do, just start at the top and scroll down and make notes of particularly interesting groups. So if I go up to the top here, going up to the A's, and just start scroll, scrolling down and you're going to see things that you may not have expected. I mean, so uh, there was one that jumped out at me I thought, really? And then I thought, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, here's one that I thought, oh, the deaf community? The thing about these groups, I thought, well, you, you're kind of looking for people who will end up sharing DNA with you, usually. And I was thinking, well, why on earth would you have a deaf community when, you know, you're not really, it's not really uh, looking at it from the point of view of deaf DNA? And then I thought, okay. And yeah, it's just bringing together this particular group of people who share a particular characteristic, who want to collaborate and help each other in any particular way that they so choose. Just wouldn't have thought of it. And so, you know, it gets kind of specific here. I mean, just jumping past there to 
the descendants of accused sailor witches, which is very specific to a piece of history, it just might pop out as you go, oh yeah, okay, I've heard that mentioned or, you know, as a kid when I wasn't really listening, I must look into that. That's why I say you just start at the top and work your way down. So the next step to get to is, well, once you've spotted a project, how do you join? Well, there are basically three different ways of joining. I mean, quite of it's quite noticeable. You see this big button here in the first column, join, join, join. But also notice that in some, like these four, there's no join button. So just to get right into it, if you're interested in a group that has a join button, I'll just click the join button. What happens? You get brought to a standard GEDmatch page where you're applying to join the group. Now, remember, these groups have administrators and moderators, right? And they do want a focus. So you are going to have to explain your interest and why, and why you think you're qualified to be a member. Now, what I would suggest is that if it's, this was Lancashire, I think, you're applying because you're interested in Lancashire because presumably it's, it's in your family tree. I would put in the details of one or more of your ancestors with birth, marriage, death dates into here, basically naming Lancashire as part of the location. This other related projects and forums, if you're interested in a surname project, you may well also be on a project run by Family Tree DNA. And if you're a member there, definitely put it in here. Now, this application page is going to send a notification to the administrator or the project moderator, whatever it's called, by, by email. So it is a waiting game for that person to make a judgment and add you to the group as they see fit. Okay. Now, once they've added you to the group, it's a two-phase process. You're not immediately in the group, and you have to confirm to Jedmatch that you want to join the group. Like the second time, I've got a section here. Is well, how do you know when you have access to the project? I didn't receive any email notification to say that the administrator had set me up in the group. But the next time I happened, to, I had to log in to Jedmatch a couple of weeks later. And I opened up the Ancestor Projects page. I saw this display, which is basically telling me that um, I've been selected to become a candidate to join a project. And I had to confirm. So I had to change that option button to I want to join this project. And I had to click the submit button to join. Right. And then it was instantaneous. Once I did that, I was in the group and I could use the features that I'm going to sh show you. OK. That was the join button. But what if, as was the case with me and my Calvin group, this group here, they didn't have a join button. So in the case where there's no join button, just scroll all the way over to the right, and what you'll see is either a link to a Facebook group, and that just says Facebook group, it doesn't actually tell you which Facebook group it is, <laughs> which some of the others do. But if you click on that link, it's going to take you to a private Facebook group and then sometimes if you see email contact here and here and then you don't see an email address but that email contact is a link what it is it's a mail to so what it, if you click on it if you give it a mailing application it pre-fills a message with an email in the two fields and the, and the particular subject line that the administrator has set up if that's in any way confusing i actually have a full section in this article about how to get at the email Joining an asset project with email, just jump down to that. So that is email, but more and more of them I see are actually Facebook, which is really <laughs> unfortunate because Facebook is a real pain in the neck for collaboration because its search capabilities are so poor. But anyway, if it's a Facebook group, you've got no choice but to join. If I click on that link, it's going to take me to Facebook. Well, the big blue join group button is key. And once you send the join, oh, okay, so that's actually, cancel that. Right, so the administrator can set this up in two ways. You can set it up so that anybody who clicks that join group joins. Alternatively, which is how the other group is set up, is that you actually get questions as to why you're interested in joining this group. Why do you think you're qualified to be a member? So then there would be a waiting period, okay? 
And the waiting period, I mean, is based on a group administrator actually seeing your application, reading it, and clicking yes. Right. You should get a notification from Facebook that you your membership has been approved. I send every notification from Facebook. I send it into my junk folder. So you just log into Facebook. It'll come up, it'll be up here as a notification. Once you join a group, you're still not done. The Pro Ancestor Project Administrator needs your kit number in order to add it to the GEDmatch Ancestor Project. And this is where it all got a bit messy and why Facebook is really awful for this process. I described my experience. I just go up here, just jump down to joining an ancestor project through Facebook. You're going to have to find how the administrator of the Facebook group expects you to provide your dead match kit number. In the case of the group that I joined, so what the administrator had done is that they had created a post, a dedicated post and pinned it as a, in the announcements section with the instructions of what to do. And then I logged back into GEDmatch. I thought, I'll go, go and check out that Ancestor project thing. What I saw when I came to this page, how do you know when you have access to the project? This is what I saw right at the very top. And you've got to confirm, click on, I want to join this project, and click the submit. Then the page just took me to a submit. Okay, thank you very much. I clicked the back button, refresh the page. And what I got was a page that now looked like what this. Right. Scrolling down, you still got all the available projects, but now I have this new form. What this allows me to do is to run a DNA comparison reports against all the members in the Ancestor project. So you stick in your GEDMAT kit number. By the way, you can put in any kit number here of as a member of the group. But how do you know? I'll come to that later. Um, but you're going to start, likely, with your own kit. Lower set work and default, you can actually just put it right down to one, which is, you know, I wouldn't recommend that. Or you can leave it at default to seven. Uh, for some reason, the upper threshold is 300. You can't go higher than that, so you're not going to be using this to find long-lost half-sibling. I would leave all the defaults. The one thing that I will change, and I always change when I come in this, is the sort options, because the report is going to come back with a list of kits who are members of this ancestor project and who share DNA with you within these boundaries. But by default, it's ordered by kit number. I I set this to Centimorgan, and if you set that to Centimorgan, it's going to be ordered by descending Centimorgan, yeah, so from high to low, which is kind of useful. So I'll just put in my kit number, click submit. Okay, so what happens here is that there is a little bit of time going to wait. Here's this counter. Just make a note, and I did put a section of this in the very final section about GEDmatch privacy rules. Because you're dealing with an off-site area, they're very hot on the privacy and what you do post and what you don't post. So just be sure that you read this. What I want to show you is the columns. Typical with GEDmatch, you don't get any explanation as to, for example, the headings. Like, there's no tool tips to say. So I was, I was looking at MKA. I was like, what the heck is that? MKA, MK. And then I remembered, oh, is that multi-kit analysis? So, which it, it is. If you're if you're on the free tier, you can ignore this. It's part of multi-kit analysis is part of the paid tier. The tree is is really handy actually. So the tree has this little icon, which is actually it's a link. It uses the feature of the GEDmatch user lookup, which is a standalone feature, and it kind of pre-populates it with this, this ID, the GEDcom ID. Click on that, and yeah, I can go in now and I can look at James's tree. Right. Now, this I for information, <laughs> it actually, what it means is, as far as I can tell, it means that they don't have a tree. So if you click it, it does the user lookup, but it's telling you that oh, there's no GEDcoms. Right. <laughs> The start and end position on the chromosome, total centimorgans, SNPs and overlap. If you're not quite sure what those are, I have a full article on what is overlap on GEDmatch, and it also goes into SNPs. 
Uh, MRCA, the most recent common ancestor in terms of generations, uh, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. And then what I find very useful is the source. Because what I find with the source is, as I scroll down and I'm looking, seeing ancestry, names start jumping out at me. So, for example, this particular person, and she's got her full name here, as opposed to an initials, like PK. So, I looked her up in Ancestry, and she has a massive tree in Ancestry. Now, what she hasn't done is she just hasn't brought a copy of her tree over to Gencom. So, I won't say much more about using the Ancestry Project comparison report, because it is very similar to the one from any comparison report. I t want to touch on using the collaborative forms, be it Facebook or another type of form. I have a small section on this in the article. My main advice is before you jump in to posting on the form, that you take the time to read through recent posts by other people and get a feel, get a good grasp of the etiquette of how to post your information and how to look for connections. So the Facebook group that I'm a member of, what I see is that people will often post screenshots. They post a screenshot of their top DNA matches, maybe 30 or 40 DNA matches from the Ancestor Project report. The downside of the screenshot is that people do have to scroll through the image. It's not searchable. So you're going to have to look at the image to see if it's relevant to you. So one of the things you might want to do to make your information come up in other people's searches is instead of posting a screenshot, is you actually download your um, your list to Excel. Did I mention Excel? Download. Yeah, but once you've run your the report and you're looking at your list, you can download the data file and open it in a spreadsheet. What that would allow you to do, and just make sure that other people are also doing this, they do in the group I'm in, is that you can copy and paste the text of people's kit numbers. And that means it'll come up, hopefully, when other people search. Some groups may actually expect you to have an introductory post saying, well, this is my kit number. These are my surnames of interest, so your ancestral surnames, and these are my specific locations within this particular area. Now, before you jump in and post anything, if you're a little bit more introverted or if for example if you're looking for your your heritage from a position of being adopted or unknown parentage and you're not ready to push it all out there just lurk and search and search and lurk there could be many many conversations going on about the particular village that you're also interested in and it comes up in a search take the kit numbers from your report Take the kit numbers that you may have looked at their trees. They may be the top kit numbers matching you and run a search on those kit numbers. I did say Facebook search isn't great, but it should be OK on something as specific as a as a kit number and see if what comes up. And hopefully that particular kit number, that particular person is already involved in a lengthy to and fro conversation with one or more people as they're collaborating with each other right there in front of you in a conversation that may have been happening a year ago. It may throw up nuggets for you. Okay, I'll leave it there. Best of luck with your research.